Hello everyone. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to the Grace Thoughts with Chill. And um, today we're going to be talking about something that bothers a lot of people concerning grace. Um, they, they say we respond to grace. I'm sure you've heard it. We respond to grace. Uh, grace preachers are accused that they don't speak so much about our response to grace. Uh, the, 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 uh, this is uh, an attempt by people who don't believe in the grace gospel, which is the only gospel, to sneak in work through the back door. Because they, they, their thinking is, how do you talk about grace as just receiving and receiving and you give nothing in return? So they speak about, you know, because we have received grace, therefore we, we need to love our brothers and sisters, love God back and stuff like that. Um, when, when you do that, you are restoring or bringing back the reward system and the works system into the gospel of Christ. And that is absolutely wrong. Grace, yes, is all about receiving and resting in what you have received. You are not required to give anything back to God. When God blesses you, it's not because he's expecting something in return from you. Don't think that because God gives you money, you are now obliged or you should, you know, as people say, pay your tithe, uh, uh, give, give to the ministry, give to the church, give to the poor. As long as this becomes your response to grace, your, mark my words, your response to grace, then you are not talking about grace. Uh, these other things, these, all, all these things are nice and we're supposed to do them. And they're supposed to flow from our hearts as directed by the Holy Spirit, but not as a response to grace, not as a, a doing something back because doing something because you have received something from God, then you feel obliged. That's not grace. That's not how grace works. I like I like how John put it. You no, know? John John talks about wine. He introduces grace in chapter two. Uh, you know, with wine, with the issue of wine, there's, there's Jesus and, and, and his mother and his disciples, they go to this uh, uh, wedding, and at this wedding, you know, wine is over, and you know the story, he turns water into wine. Uh, that story has so many levels of significance for everyone who is interested in grace. But I'm going to just pick out that part of the wine. How do you, how do you respond to good wine? Let me read uh, John chapter 2 and verse 11 for you. Sorry, verse 10 for you. And the master of the feast said to Jesus, Everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. So this is, this is very important. How do you respond to good wine? When, when God gives you good wine, what, what's your response? Do you give him good wine back? You know, there's so many things that Jesus has given. This, this good wine stands for the works of Jesus. The, all the works of Jesus are represented by good wine because they are works of grace. You know, we are forgiven. That's what we receive. That's good wine. Do you forgive God back because you have been forgiven? We are justified. Do you justify God? We are sanctified. We are redeemed. You know, I just listed the works of Jesus here. We are saved. Do you, do you save God back? We are loved. Do you love God back? Can you? Uh, we are adopted. What do you do? In this case, where you are adopted, the, you're given good wine of adoption. We are glorified. What do you do? What's your response? Now, my understanding is that when you are given good wine, 
You drink it. It's as simple as that. You drink it. You simply plain drink it. You enjoy it. This is the proper response to grace. When God gives you wine, good wine, a real good wine that is better than the wine of the Old Testament of works, the wine of, 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 of efforts, justification by efforts, the wine of self-righteousness is bad wine. And God gives you good wine in Christ Jesus. What's your response? You drink it. You enjoy it. That's the plan. The plan of God is that he gives us good wine and we plain enjoy the wine. We drink it. We, we get intoxicated by the wine that we have received. We get intoxicated. Now, of course, we're not talking about the intoxication of drunkards. But you, God wants us to be so filled with his wine, so filled with what he has prepared for us by his miraculous supernatural power. He wants us to just enjoy it and drink it and just be grateful for it. Even this gratitude should not be seen as something old, God. You know, we, we share it. Sharing this wine. See, that's what you, what you do when you're given good wine. You share it. You call people and say, come, I have excellent wine. Come and enjoy it with me. But even the sharing should not be construed or understood in terms of works. There's nothing. You, you, God is not giving you this thing so that you respond, but you, you enjoy it and you rest in him. And that's why so many people are enjoying. They are trying to still sneak in this business mentality with God that he gives me, I give him. Oh, they say, ah, we now understand grace. You know, ah, thank you. Oh, you have given us that I now understand grace. You know, grace is not I give God and God rewards me. Ah, thank you. I've had this so many times. And then you want to know, okay, what's how you've understood grace? What do you mean now? What? How do you understand grace? And the person goes on and says, ah, it's, it's God who gives me first. Then I give him back. Ah, you've not understood grace then. You know, I give him back. No, there's, there's not, the plan is not for us to give him back. The plan is for us to, you see, when you, when you are justified, automatically in your justification, God is glorified. When you succeed, God is glorified. You are made in the image of God. So when you succeed, God, is, God succeeds. When you are happy, God is happy. When you uh, receive forgiveness, God is excited. When you receive uh, uh, adoption, you know, when you receive his word into your heart, when you are grateful for what the things he has given, when you receive his redemption, his salvation, when you receive new life, new creation life, when God gives eternal life and you receive eternal life, God is glorified. So there's no response that is as good a response as receiving what God has given, the good wine of grace. This is, this is, this is, this is how God is, if you want to use the word repaid, he's repaid by you receiving what he has given. You know, it's like, it's like you have a visitor and the visitor comes into your house and you serve the visitor food. Do you know the kind of joy you have when the visitor eats your food? Eat your food. Not when the visitor says, um, how do I respond? I have to invite you back. You, you actually feel insulted when the visitor thinks that um, he needs to invite you back to settle the score so that at no point is he owing you. It's, it's mistrust. Yet the new covenant of grace is based on trust to say that God wants what's best for me and what's best for me is what's best for him. If I receive the good wine he has given, if I receive the blessings he has given, if, if he says, oh, you are a sinner, but I justify you, I forgive you, and, and I give you new life, you just receive it and you drink it and you enjoy it. Actually, he wants you to drink as much as possible. That's why he didn't change water into juice. 
He didn't change water into grape juice, as some people say. He changed water into wine because he wants you to enjoy it, to drink it until you get intoxicated. You get crazy about his grace. You can't be crazy on juice. You can't be crazy on, on just uh, 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 sugary water. No, you, can't, you, you, you go crazy and the wine takes over your life. When you are really, really drunk, high on the Holy Spirit, high on the gifts of God, high on what God has given. That's exactly what God wants. That's his desire. He desires us to be filled so much with the fullness of him that we become other beings, like drunk people, doing things that nobody would expect us to do. Crazy things for the Lord. The Lord bless you.